Yo, welcome back. Long time no see. How are you? Good, good. Uh, so I've been living in a tiny house for most of winter. I thought I'd show you what it's like inside because I never really have shown you, have I? So let's have a quick look. So excuse the mess. It's just one little room, look. With a cat. Uh, 20 meter squared um, and there's not too much to it bed used to have a sofa in here but moved it moved it to an office little area which is an absolute mess but that's what happens when you live in a tiny space the power which is hello um, two eco floors at the moment but this one is getting returned because it is done for I've had about a million replacements um, don't buy EcoFlow. Hopefully we'll be replacing it with a standalone system. Um, don't buy EcoFlow because of things like this. And it also does things like this. So not very reliable and not what you need, is it? So that's getting sorted out right now, apparently. Heating the place with just this uh, terrible gas heater, which has been years now, um, just because of the price of installing a stove and future plans. Uh, but I'll tell you about future plans a little bit later on. And then cooking has all been by uh, this gas oven by Sunwind. And I've got to tell you, it is amazing. And life changing because for a long time I was just using a Trangia camp stove for far too long. But that has been life changing. So you should get one unless you've got a stove because that's going to be better. Because you don't want to be reliant on these gas canisters. But it does the trick. So I mean, beggars can't be choosers. There's nothing really else to show you in here. It's just the uh, little cooking uh, prep table. Washing machine that I keep inside during winter because it freezes really quick. Uh, looks horrible there, but you gotta keep it away from the bitter, bitter cold. And water by this old Berkefeld filter. Uh, so pump it from the well, bring it over, pour it in here, and it purifies it. That's how I get my water inside here. And that's really it for the tiny house. It is tiny, which is why I want to fix up the other place so badly for more room. But during winter, it makes sense to be in the tiny house because it is a lot cheaper to heat it. And it's more insulated and newly built. So it works. For the toilet, the outhouse is there in the forest and uh, a recycle all the waste from it but I won't get into that because that is nasty still been showering in this little unit during winter I used this little uh, dunking method put that in the water and jobs are good and because in winter the on water water on demand unit is no good and it um the water expands and it'll break because it's too cold so unfortunately that's a no-go during winter it'll be nice when that changes and this is the outhouse i might as well quickly show you nothing spectacular a nice window look when you sat in here look nice little view of the woods while you do your business A oh, little squirrel. There's not too much to say about that. Unless you really want to know the ins and outs, let me know. But let's go and look at the main house that needs done up. Oh, and it needs done up. And for the long time viewers, the world's worst snow shelter is still standing. So maybe it's not the world's worst halfway through winter and it's still up <laughs> so the house 
things I need to do on it. I still need to re replace all the gutter in and paint the piece of wood behind it. Look, I need to paint that white. I think I might put white wood on the corner bits as well. But apart from that, the outside is a lot better. Let's go inside. All frozen. In the hallway, it's got the new floor and the new wall. I still need to put a ceiling in here and all between these logs, I need to fill them. So I'll pull out all this old rubbish moss and uh, fill this whole area in and it'll look a lot nicer. Go upstairs, ignore my uh, overwintering chili plants. Ignore a lot of stuff that's up here actually. It is a tip, but it has been like minus 40, so it's not fun to come and do any work in here. I need to clad this wall, but it's huge. So it's gonna cost a fortune. And I just don't know how much money to plow into this project. As like I say, I have future plans, which I will tell you about very shortly, once we've gone over this main house. Still need to fill in this wall with insulation and clad it. And I have a lot of roof bits that I need to fix as well, which will be fun. But it's a huge, huge area that I either need something done with it or just not done with it but time will tell on that one let's go downstairs so into the first room now this wall is cladded a little nicer than it was still have to put in some beading bits of wood up the edges and fill in these logs to tidy it up screed and plaster that disgusting uh, brick fireplace area so it looks a little bit nicer and I really want to do something with this floor because it's horrible uh, I don't know if I'm going to floorboard it or sand it I'm not quite sure yet again excuse the mess in here um, just had to do a quick dash to move into the tiny house when the temperatures drop so it's kind of just been abandoned in here again fill in between all the logs sort the floor probably sand it reinstate this cock lugan fireplace it just needs sealed up the sides and then it could well be usable but the main chimney stack at the top is a little bit battered so I do need to look at uh, investing in lots of sets of ladders and fitting loads of ironwork to the roof to make it safe enough to get it inspected so it passes and the insurance can't say anything. Which is a whole dilemma in itself. Well, apart from that, nearly everything else in here is done. Repainted all the ceilings. Um, sorted out some of the little bits around the room that needed sorted some of the windows and whatnot next room again a million things to fix screed in this plaster that's all collapsed out um seal off this old fireplace there was an old stove here but it's uh been redundant for a long time Look all the ice that's coming down it <laughs> in the newly built wall to make into a bathroom i just need to fit a big piece of iron for a sliding door to go over to the bathroom and then i will build a composting toilet in this area and vent it out of this wall that goes outside. Redo the floor, build it up properly. And then in this back area, I'll make a sort of wet room shower area, which I can run all the water out through this wall 
the drainage and the water in which I'll do via big IBC tanks outside here in some big insulated box. But again, the price of IBCs and everything that would go with that to complete the whole build, it's quite a lot of money. So do I invest in doing it or do I not? I don't know. And this is into the old kitchen. I removed this wall. Um, this really needs a lot of work. The whole ceiling needs sanded, painted and fixed up. And also this old stove place. I am going to put that old stove back as soon as the temperatures pick up and I can do cementing again. Because I need to screed all of this, plaster it, paint it, install that back, sort out the bottom part of the fireplace. And then that should be okay. All these pallets are in here because I had all my water tanks in here, but they all exploded, which was fun. Um, so now I don't have any water tanks. Well, I've got one, but yeah, it was not a fun activity when I came in and there was, I think I had six water tanks in here that had all exploded. So I still need to deal with that, but I'm waiting for the warmer weather. In here is the same for the walls. I need to pull out all this old moss and fill it in. I'll make a, my own log chinking and fill everything in, tighten everything up and make it look a lot smarter. And if I can fix my chainsaw or get a better chainsaw and um, a log milling, set up i need to make a nice kitchen area with worktops etc but we'll see how it fares again everything is a massive investment and how much do you invest i'm considering just tidying things up and um selling the place so my major plans are that I need to buy a bigger property um, for a business that I want to set up. So it may be a case that I do this place up just to an acceptable standard to sell. But there'll be more about all that on this channel as things progress. And that is the house. But I shall light a fire and have a little chat with you, shall I? Go on then. So where were we? Um, renovations. Yeah, I want to do as many renovations as possible, obviously. But money is a big factor and work has been awful. Hence the reason why I really would like to buy a bigger place with more land um, to run a business from home, which would be uh, a lot better. Unfortunately, there's not the land size here that I need to do that business. So that is the problem. But that's possible if I just get it to an acceptable standard for sale. And the mortgage is quite low here. So it wouldn't be too much of an issue, hopefully. But we'll see. But everything's getting eaten at the moment by mortgage, taxes. Winter's the worst for uh, paying for the gas and lots of payments going out. So renovations really takes um, a back step. But hopefully that'll adjust soon. Uh, now I've got a little bit more freedom. Now the ducks have gone and things like that. So the scope at least the reason I've not been uh, filming or releasing videos recently 
is because everything has been too Debbie Downer to film. And I didn't want to release just loads of super negative videos for you. And just things breaking, everything breaking, generators, cars, everything going downhill. So it's not fun to film. I know people just like to see the uh, fairy tale on YouTube. So yeah, it's difficult to release some sort of content that's not too boohoo. Unfortunately, uh, everything is not a fairy tale. Things break and you have to deal with real life things like paying mortgages and taxes and all the rest of it. So, but as I said, that's not too fun to film, is it? And although this channel is um, focused on showing the true reality of living this sort of simple life, um, yeah, it's best not to flood it with just super negative stuff all the time. But you know, difficulties strengthen the mind as labour does the body, so it's all good really. Just everything takes so much longer, especially when it's, you know, freezing and winter for like six, seven months of the year with snow on the ground. We've also started to prepare for the growing season. And for the growing season, I'm going to take a step back a little um, because too, my ta too much of my time in the summer gets taken up with all the growing of the food. So I'm going to relax on that a little and grow things that are much easier. And hopefully that'll free me up a tiny bit to uh, indulge in some other things. And then there's just over one year left on my visa. And then I can apply for citizenship, etc. And we'll see how that goes. I'm not 100% sure how that'll pan out or if we'll even stay in Sweden long term. I don't know at this point. It's too difficult to say. But keep watching, find out, I guess. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. It's just a quick little update on how things are going and what's going to be happening and all the rest of it. Um, but there is many an exciting thing coming soon, I assure you. Um, if I can get the power sorted, I will be fitting uh, a small solar battery um, type array. Uh, I'm just waiting on refunds and all kinds of things, sending things back and blah, 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 boring life stuff. Um, and hopefully that'll all work out well. And then the next video will be super exciting. So uh, I'll catch you then. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.